a miracle, a miracle today. Come and do a miracle, a miracle today. Destiny changer. Galatians 5 1 from the NIV, and then we're going to have Genesis 2 25. Galatians 5 1, the Bible says. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 25. The man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We are so grateful to be here this morning to receive your word. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. We pray that as, uh, as we receive the word that our mind shall be open. We ask dear Lord that our hearts shall be that kind of heart that is able to receive your word and uh, let it germinate and produce much fruit to the glory and to the honor of your name. Lord, anything that will scatter whatever we hear today, we come against in the name of Jesus. We pray that our minds will not roam around. We pray that trouble will not take our attention from here. We pray that if there's any discomfort or pain, that Lord, they will not hinder us from hearing your word, but we will take this word and this word will bring life, healing, freedom, and deliverance to the glory and to the honor of your name. Have your way in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to share with us this morning on freedom's deadliest enemy. The enemy number one of freedom. And that is irresponsibility. Irresponsibility is freedom's deadliest enemy. Now, from where we have read in Galatians chapter 5 and verse number 1, the Bible says that it is for freedom that Jesus set us free. In other words, Jesus set us free so that we can be able to enjoy freedom. The setting free from sin. I know it has come with salvation. It has come with assurance of our destiny. But I'm also here to tell us that that setting us free that Jesus did as he died on that cross, was buried and rose again, it was for your freedom. Praise the name of the Lord. Which means God's will for all of us is that we may experience and enjoy freedom. There's a lot of bondage that is going around in the world today. That is not the will of God. The will of God is not that we continue in any form of bondage. The will of God is that we experience freedom in every area of our lives. That is why scripture is saying, stand firm therefore, that you are not again burdened by any form of slavery. And this morning, I want to share with us that there is something that if you are not careful about, will bring a form of bondage in your life, and yet God has already released freedom for us, irresponsibility, like other subtle sins, is almost in impossible to see in the mirror. I can see it in other people quickly, but I can't see it in me. Many of the sins that we 
find ourselves in, we can see them easily in other people. But many times we don't see them in ourselves. And the same applies to irresponsibility. And I feel like in some ways our whole Christian culture is becoming less and less responsible and irresponsibility is almost being celebrated in the times that we are living in. We almost seem to hold to a belief that grace has given us the freedom to be irresponsible. That we have the right to do whatever we want to do. We have the right to say whatever we want to say. We have the right to act in whichever way we want to act. And we have no right, and somebody has no right to hold you responsible or accountable to what you are doing. And then on the other hand, we expect people to take responsibility for the mess that we cause. But the Bible clearly states in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 15, we are asked a question, what then? Shall we continue to sin just because we are no longer under the law? Shall we continue to be irresponsible just because this is the dispensation of grace? Because that is what seems to be in the mind of most Christians today. We are no longer under the law, we are under the grace. And so we do whatever we do, we say whatever we say, we go wherever we go, we act whichever way we act because we are under grace. But I've come to remind us, freedom and grace comes with great responsibility. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, nothing in society is more destructive than irresponsibility. Homes have been destroyed because of irresponsibility. Lives have been messed up because of irresponsibility. Countries have been messed up because of irresponsibility. And many times you will not even realize that this thing is killing you. This thing is destroying your life. This thing is destroying your family. This thing is destroying your destiny. You go on living, you know, thinking like, oh, I am not fornicating and I'm not committing a doubt and I'm not doing that. But when you have the spirit of irresponsibility controlling your life, my friend, your destiny is in danger. Praise the name of the Lord. The irresponsibility of Adam in the Garden of Eden has affected every generation of mankind since he partook the forbidden fruit together with Eve, his wife. And today, because of Adam's uh, sin that happened 6,000 years ago, the world in which we live is under the spell of the spirit of irresponsibility. So what is irresponsibility? Number one, irresponsibility can be defined as not answerable to authority. Many people in the world today don't want anyone telling them what to do. They want to do what they feel like doing. And they want to do it as long as they want to do it. If that is the way you live your life, you are under the spirit of irresponsibility. The bondage of irresponsibility. Irresponsibility can also be defined as lacking a sense of accountability or not liable or able to answer for consequences. Many people don't want to be accountable to anyone, including God. And that is why we are walking from one church to the next, to the next, to the next, because if anybody was to put you accountable or ask you to be responsible for some things, you simply go shop and look for another church. 
That is the Christianity that we are having today. But I believe that is not the church that Jesus died for. I believe it's not the church that he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. We must be responsible. Number three, responsibility can also be defined as lacking conscience. Or if you want, like um, the word master will say, <laughs> lacking conscience or unable or unwilling to respond to conscience. You see, conscience is man's um, way of distinguishing between right and wrong. Once your conscience is dead, you will not be able to distinguish between right and wrong, or if you do, you don't care about it. When a lifestyle of irresponsibility is allowed to increase, the voice of conscience is progressively silenced. And I'm afraid to say that in many of our lives, this voice is dumb. We don't hear it anymore. It shouts, but we can't hear this voice of conscience. Number four. Irresponsibility can also be defined as, a, as being fickle, changeable, not firm, not having any stand. Irresponsible people can be thoughtless, rash, undependable, loose, lax, and immoral. They can have an unpredictable, unreliable, untrustworthy character. If you look into your life and you realize that you are unreliable, you are unpredictable, you are untrustworthy, you are under the spirit of responsibility. And I'm afraid to say that this is not just in the world or outside the church. This is right inside our churches today. We have people that you cannot rely on. We have people that you cannot depend on. We have people that are totally untrustworthy. You are people that are immoral in church. We are people that are undependable. We are people that are thoughtless. We are people that are loose. Right in our congregation. Lifting up hands. Praising the Lord. Dancing before the Lord. And yet, there's a bondage of irresponsibility that has captured us. My prayer is that we will enjoy the freedom that Jesus came to give us. My prayer is that we will rise up to the occasion and say, I want to enjoy the freedom that Jesus gave to me. I will be responsible in my own way. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, irresponsible people are experts at transferring blame for their own irresponsible actions. Irresponsible people do not take responsibility for any action they, they do. If they kill, they have a reason why they killed. It is because they mistreated me. Or it's because this is happening in my life and that is why I did what I did. And this all began with Adam. Remember, Adam was created first. God gave Adam responsibility. God gave Adam freedom. And then God brought Eve to Adam. And together they were told, you know, to um, um, be fruitful, multiply and replenish the earth. They were told to have dominion in the earth. All that was responsibility. And yet there was freedom released. Adam could do anything in the garden apart from one thing they were not supposed to do. Eat from the fruit of the you know of the knowledge of good and evil that was in the middle of the garden but all 
all the other things they were free to do. Adam and Eve will walk with God in the cool of the evening. They were so free. That is why the Bible says they were naked but not ashamed. They had no reason to be ashamed. They were responsible. But when irresponsibility came in, then, you know, they realized that now they were naked. They were looking for things to cover themselves up. And we do the same in this generation. But Adam in Genesis 3, 12, the Bible says that instead of Adam taking responsibility, Adam said, it is the woman you gave me. In other words, God, if you never gave me this woman, I will not have done what I did. You gave me this woman. This woman gave me the fruit. I ate the fruit. The problem is with you and the woman, not me. You see, we don't know how long Adam lived before Eve came to the scene. All we know that, you know, he was given work to do before Eve came into the scene, and he named animals, all of them. And I don't think that took one week. I don't think it took a couple of months. I think it took a long time. In other words, Adam was reminding God, for the period that I was alone, I never messed up. I never took the tree. But the moment you brought this woman, now this woman took the food. This woman gave me the food. The problem is not mine. I am not taking responsibility. Ask the woman. But you see, God knows who he gave responsibility. It was Adam, and it was actually both of them. And so Adam needed to just take responsibility. The problem we are having today is we have so many people that mess up and want to blame somebody else for their mess. I know that people contribute and systems contribute to the failures, to the you know, irresponsibilities that we find ourselves in or doing, but we cannot take, uh, we cannot keep on blaming other people, blaming the systems for the mistakes and the mess that we keep on doing in our own lives. We can never arrive at destiny in that manner. We can never achieve great things in that manner. We can never be all that God wanted us to be if we keep on doing whatever we are doing and blaming it on somebody else. So we have young people today who mess up and they blame it on absentee fathers. We have young people that mess up and they blame it on where they are raised up. They say, if only I was not raised up in the ghetto, I will be a responsible person. As though we don't have irresponsible people raised up in other neighborhoods. If only my father was there, then I would have been responsible. But how many young people without fathers have made it in life and they are, you know, achieving what God created them to achieve? How many? How many children have been thrown in the streets and picked up? No father, no mother, and they made it. Why? Because they reached a point and they took responsibility of their lives. But here we have people that will do all the evil and blame it on parents. We have young people today that will blame all their mistakes and all their messes on the government. There are no jobs. That is why we have a gun to rape and to kill and to steal from people. Why? Because the government has failed us. I have come to tell us today, it is time for us to rise up, take responsibility of our lives, look up to God, take up the freedom that he gave us, and run with it. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We cannot continue to have men that are absconding their responsibility and blaming it on hostile women in their houses. So we do not want to take responsibility. Leave me alone. The mistake is not mine. It is the other person. It is in the system. We live in an irresponsible generation that believes the world owes it something and they owe the world nothing. People refuse to take personal responsibility for their own lives, decisions, and actions. We have nations today that do not want to take responsibility for the failures that are in those nations. They will always blame somebody else, some 
superpower somewhere or some failure somewhere that is why we are leading the way we are leading that is why we are looting the coffers that is why we are stealing that is why we practice tribalism you know it is because of that tribe it's because of that person it is because of the people that we are leading so we have politicians that are blaming their citizens because they ask them for handouts that is why they are corrupt and we have we have citizens who are blaming the politicians you know for corruption and yet they're the ones that are asking them for handouts and so we have the blame game continuing nobody is taking responsibility for the mess that we find ourselves in the origin on the origin of irresponsibility when did this spirit of irresponsibility enter our world capture our society and capture our lives strangling the freedom out of us that God gave us so freely through his son Jesus Christ again the answer is simple this destructive spirit began with Adam in Genesis we find that the first man who carried all men in his loins violated his freedom that he was given Adam was given trust he was given responsibility for the entire earth but he violated it and he failed he had the responsibility to maintain righteousness and holy standards of his creator God on this planet but he failed the test of obedience and today we are all under the same spell but thank God for Jesus the second Adam came and he said I came and I set you free for freedom that you may get back to the place where it was before where a man was free to walk with God talk with God fellowship with God where a man was free not to feel like there are things he needed to cover up he was naked and not ashamed that is where God wants us to be after Jesus has set us free but because this spell continues to draw us back we still find ourselves trying to cover ourselves up with different things just the way Adam and Eve tried and we realize that it does not work people of God I'm here to tell us today all we need is to humble ourselves and get back to the place of responsibility and allow God to be God allow us to be accountable to God so that he can make us and mold us to be the people that he created us to be praise the name of the Lord God's command to Adam was plain and simple and that command still stands today be fruitful and multiply replenish the earth and have dominion it is interesting to note that freedom sounds nice it is interesting to note that being fruitful sounds nice it is interesting to note that replenishing sounds good it is interesting to note that having dominion sounds good but let me tell us people there is no irresponsible person that can have dominion you can never have dominion when you are irresponsible that is why nations that are irresponsible to take care of their own people take care of their own resources can never have dominion in this earth we must get back to the place of dominion hallelujah everybody is talking about freedom we are fighting for freedom we are crying for freedom we are ready to kill for freedom but once we are given the freedom we do not want the responsibility of freedom in this nation people shed blood for freedom in this nation families were wiped out for freedom in this nation when we got freedom we celebrate it and everywhere this is replicated when people fight for freedom they get it they celebrate but the problem is 
we cannot maintain the freedom because of the spirit of irresponsibility. And sometimes you wonder, maybe we should have continued being under colonial rule. Maybe things will be better today. I can tell you for free, if we were still under the, uh, the colonial rule today, the Mombasa Nairobi Highway will be a dual carriage. I can tell you for free today, if we were still under colonial rule, the Likoni Channel will be having a bridge. But the problem is, give us freedom. You are given freedom, no responsibility. Today we still have a road that is killing people left, right, and center every day because of the mess it is in. Today we still have danger hanging on on those unpredictable ferries. Why? Because we cannot simply put up a bridge. Not because we don't have money. We are totally irresponsible with the resources we have. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we will pray, and so we will cry, and we will say we need freedom. But it must begin with us individually. Are you responsible in the area that God has placed you in? Are you responsible in the church where God has placed you in? Before we point fingers to the politicians and say they have failed us in this area and failed us in that area, can we look inward and ask ourselves, am I responsible with the little that God has given to me? Am I responsible with the brains he gave me? Am I where I'm supposed to be if I was to use just a quarter of the brains that he has given to me? Can I be able to be what God had intended for me to be. The problem is we are experts at blaming others and blaming the past for our present. And so you find a drunkard who blame the beer company. That is the one that caused them to be drunk. As though the beer company took hold of them opened their mouth by force and made them to drink the beer. Hello, people. We have people misbehaving on our roads today, blaming it on the traffic police or the narrow roads. Why are you driving on the pavement? You are totally not responsible. But the problem is, the roads are narrow, the jam is too long, that is why the county is not doing anything, the government is not doing anything, that's why I'm breaking the law. It's not my problem, it is the country's problem. Nobody takes responsibility. In fact, we celebrate the irresponsible people. When somebody misbehaves in a place of authority, we defend them just because they come from our tribe, just because, you know, um, they are coming from our political alignment. We do not want to put anybody or take anybody to account. Especially in Africa. So in Africa, the thieves are celebrated. The liars are celebrated. The warlords are celebrated. And then we say we are responsible nations. We are supposed to experience freedom. That is not the freedom Jesus came to give us. I was surprised that the founder of Facebook is Mike Watt. This bugger man is uh, Zuckerberg. <laughs> Zuckerberg was called by American Senate because Facebook has been misused to tamper with elections in other nations. And so he was called to be grilled by the Senate. This is a moneyed man. This is a powerful man. And he sits in this Senate 
And he said, we created Facebook. And Facebook has been misused to cause problems in other nations by interfering with the elections in other nations. Facebook has been misused, you know, to cause um, hatred. And he said, we take responsibility. I take responsibility. That will never happen in an African nation. If Zuckerberg was a Kenyan, all he needed to do was, before he arrived at the Senate was to have a political rally and say, now they are calling me. They don't like our tribe. You see the way they are talking about our tribe? As though the tribe also enjoys whatever he does. And the tribe rises up to defend their own. Total irresponsibility. People of God, God has said, it is for freedom. Hallelujah. I did not set you free to continue in your bondage. I did not set you free to live irresponsible. I do not set you free to keep shifting blame. I set you free to enjoy freedom and true freedom that comes with responsibility. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Irresponsibility is freedom's deadliest enemy. It's not lack of money. So today our leaders will steal all the money in our coffers, then they will stand up and say, we are like this because we are not a superpower, just because we don't have money, just because America has this, they should not be ordering us around. And we clap and cheer. We are just as responsible as they are. I am praying for a day that people will be called in whatever ground they are. And when somebody stands up there to try to make it look like all they are stealing and all they are doing is because of us, we will rise up and walk out of that ground and leave him dire on that platform. I pray that we can get that responsible. Praise the name of the Lord. I pray that we can be able to get to a place where if somebody has messed up and shifts the blame and wants a cover from the tribe, the tribe will walk out and say, you are alone. We are not with you in that. Hallelujah. People in every walk of life and from every ethnic background have fallen prey to irresponsibility. Today we have black people blaming the white people for their problems. And we have the white blaming the black for their problems. Today we have the poor blaming the rich for their problems. And we have the rich blaming the poor for their problems. Today we have citizens blaming the government officials for their problems. And we have government officials blaming the citizens for their problems. We are corrupt because there are no jobs. The government has not created enough jobs. So they will go to a Juakali somewhere and come and tell us this year we created 100,000 jobs and we clap our hands. Now, the government has no responsibility to create jobs for you. Doesn't sound nice. Let me repeat it again. Don't blame the Jubilee government for not creating jobs for you. That is not their work. Hello? Their work is to create an environment that will help us to create jobs. God has given each and every person about five billion brain cells. Use it. Praise the name of the Lord. Use it to be responsible. Between our two years, there are over five billion brain cells. 
In that head that you take to the saloon every week, there are 5,000 brain cells. In that head that is shaved every week, there are 5 billion brain cells. Use them. Hallelujah. And let's stop this attitude of the government. We want to put another one. Put another government. They will behave the same way. Until the day we will become responsible. Praise the name of the Lord. I am advocating for a people that will stop the blame game and take charge of their lives. Correct their own messes. Rise up to the occasion and be the people that God has created them to be. Praise the name of the Lord. I challenge us today to rise up to the task of taking responsibility. So many people have become lazy because of the charismatic faith messages we receive in our churches today. God parted the way for the children of Israel. All your problems will part the way. Type Amen. In an electronic device to give you certain freedoms and breakthroughs, a phone created by man, something that when it falls, it breaks. You are told when you typed Amen in that thing and share it, all your problems will be taken care of. Irresponsibility of the highest order must stop in Jesus' name. Amen. Even the seeds. You cannot live an irresponsible life and put some money in an envelope and it will change your irresponsibility. Take charge of your life, people. Hallelujah. Let's take charge of our lives. God is not a genie that we come to and uh, we do some, some things and then everything just falls into place. No. He's a living God. He loves you. He created you. He gave you all that you needed to become the person that he wants you to be. All you need to do is get back to him and become responsible. Hallelujah. I say that freedom given by grace is not a ticket for living lives that are messed up. True freedom imposes more laws, demands more work, and requires more responsibility than slavery. Let me repeat that. True freedom imposes more laws, demands more work, and requires more responsibility than slavery. But here we are because of the spell of irresponsibility. We are thinking now that we are free, now that this is the dispensation of grace, we can just mess up, we can just live the way we want, we can just talk the way we want, we can go wherever we want, and it shall be well with us. God is saying, irresponsibility is freedom's greatest enemy. I pray that we get back to the place of responsibility. I pray that the church takes her place in society and be the voice of reason. But that will only happen if we take responsibility. I pray that we organize our families according to God's word so that we can influence 
the places that we live, the art that we live in. But that will only happen if we take responsibility. We can't blame our past for the present nor the future. All we can do is take charge and say, I am responsible for this mess. And I humble myself before the Lord that he can help me to correct it. Hallelujah. Let me give you some spiritual admonition on responsibility, on freedom. If you walk in the spirit, you will enjoy true freedom. 2 Corinthians 3.17 he says, now the Lord is the spirit, and where the spirit is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of God is, there is freedom, true freedom. So if you walk in the spirit, there is no way you can walk in the spirit and still be responsible. You will enjoy true freedom. Number two, use your freedom responsibly. 2 Corinthians or 1 Corinthians 6 12. He says, I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. I must use my freedom responsibly. Number three, use freedom to serve others not to lord it over them. Galatians 5.13 says, You, my brothers and sisters, who are called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Number four, freedom in Christ leads to holiness and eternal life. Romans 6.12 uh, 6.22 sorry Romans 6.22 Freedom in Christ leads to holiness and eternal life Number 5 Don't use your freedom as a cover up to sin 1 Peter 2.16 So the challenge we have today is we must rise up to the place where we take responsibility for all that God has given to us. Take responsibility for this life. Take responsibility for the destiny that he has given to us. We must stop the blame game and we must be able to correct whatever needs to be corrected. I have come to tell us today that children must stop blaming their parents for the mess they are in. Parents must stop blaming their children for the mess that they find themselves in. We must take responsibility. Stop blaming the authorities that you are under. Take your responsibility. It shall be corrected up there. If the citizens decide we are tired of being led by irresponsible leaders who loot and lord over us and make us feel like we have to fight one another. Things shall be sorted out, but we must take responsibility. We must stop the blame game and we must stop blaming pastors for the mess that we find ourselves in as believers. We must take responsibility. Let me tell you, people of God, when you stand before God, it's not going to be about why you are raised up. It's not going to be about whether your father was present or not. It's not going to be whether you are two parents or none or one. It's not going to be whether you are raised in a slum or raised up in a suburb. It's not going to be about where you went to school. It's going to be about how responsible are you with the faith and the freedom that Jesus gave you when he died on that cross and rose again on the third day. So we must get our act together. We must get back to God and we must humble ourselves and say, yes, we need the freedom that you worked for. We need the freedom that you gave us because you set us free for that freedom. We have messed it up with our own irresponsible lifestyle. But God, by your mercy, can we now experience true freedom? And I believe that God, by his mercy and grace, 
will rescue us. Shall we stand this morning? Now, if you're here and you're feeling like I wish so and so was here to listen to this message, you are totally irresponsible. And if you're here and you're feeling like, oh, I wish this could have been preached to our politicians, you are totally irresponsible. This is your message. Amen? It is my message. It is not somebody else's message. And I'm glad I'm here. And I'm glad I came. Amen? The blame shifters will be quick to tweet and send I wish you had this, but it is for me. Close your eyes. Ask the Lord to be merciful for every form of irresponsibility you have ever found yourself in. Anything that you've done that has contributed to a failure in your life, a failure in your family, a failure in your business, failure in your marriage. Take responsibility. Say, I am responsible. And God help me that I put in the changes that I need to put in. Because what I want is to enjoy freedom. If we continue being responsible, we are shifting from one form of slavery to the next form of slavery. And this is what is happening in the African continent today. We are shifting from colonialism. We are getting into another form of bondage. May God help us. May God help us. May God open our eyes. May God cause us to rise up and take charge of our lives and become responsible citizens so that we can raise up nations that are truly free. Maybe you're here this morning. There are things you don't like about your life. There are things you don't like about where you are. There are things you don't like in your family. Maybe you don't like even the financial position you find yourself in. Maybe you don't like the status you are in. You are jobless or your business is not doing well. The one thing I don't want you to do is begin to blame somebody for it. Let's stop the blame game. Let's ask God for wisdom. Let's ask him for direction. Let's ask God for how we can utilize the brain cells that he has put in our heads. Let's ask him to guide us by his spirit. He can do it. If he set us free for freedom, I know he wants us to be truly free. That is his desire. That is what he wants. He wants to restore back the relationship that he had with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden before the fall. That is what God desires to see. Father, in the name of Jesus, this morning we stand in awe of you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending Jesus we thank you Jesus for dying on that cross so that you can set us free so that we can experience true freedom but Lord today we want to confess that we are not enjoying true freedom not because somebody else has refused not because there are roadblocks that have been placed it's because of our own irresponsibility help us to be responsible oh God with our lives that we may experience true freedom Lord if there are people here that are not experiencing true freedom in their lives 
Maybe there are things that have happened in their lives, things that they don't want anybody to ask or talk about. They don't want to be accountable to anybody. I am praying today that, Lord, you will humble that person. Help them to take responsibility of whatever happened. That you may set them in a new course of true freedom. Father, I pray that if there are marriages that are messed up today, I pray, dear Lord, that it will not be a, a finger-pointing game. It was my husband. It was my wife that did it. I pray today that we will take responsibility and say, I take responsibility for whatever happened. But I'm willing to pick myself up and move on and become more responsible. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Minister to all of us today. Help us to be all that you want us to be before we blame the people in government positions and, and authority. That God, from down here, we can be responsible before we expect our government leaders to be responsible. Thank you that your grace is sufficient, that your masses are new. You have spoken to us today to remind us that it is for freedom that you set us free. And if we are not enjoying it, Lord, bring us to the place where we can enjoy that freedom. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a good hand this morning. And if you're here and you're not born again, you can take charge of your life right now and surrender your life to Jesus. Don't say you can't be born again because there are too many churches nowadays or churches have become commercial. People have excuse upon excuse as to why they should not do the right thing. Your salvation has nothing to do with church. It has everything to do with your relationship with Jesus. So you are here and you are not born again. Even if you don't usually come to this church and you want to accept Jesus you want to take responsibility for your life and for your destiny. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. I will see it. I will pray with you. Jesus will come into your life. He will be the savior of your life. You are not born again. You know it. And you want to receive Christ as your Lord and savior. Can I see your hand? Or oh, you know things are not right. You are not walking right. You are backslidden and you want to be restored. Can I see your hand? You want to take responsibility. You are not blaming anybody for it. Are you there? Father, in Jesus' name I pray that if there's anyone in our midst that does not know you in a personal way, even as we leave this service, Lord, let your Holy Spirit continue to draw them to yourself that they will come to the place of surrender and give their lives. Father, we thank you. We bless your name today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.